Hey everyone, in the last video here on the channel, I talked about the different types of cables that we use for transporting video, so HDMI, SDI, fiber, NDI over Ethernet. And I mentioned this one of the advantages of SDI, that you can make your own cables. And I personally strongly recommend that whenever you do, you do so. You end up with higher quality cables, and you end up with cables that are exact length, the exact length that you need, so you don't have extra cable that you're having to coil, coil up and, and get out of the way. Um, so... I wanted to demonstrate how you actually do your own t cable termination, so putting the ends on. Um, I'm going to be using Belden 1505A here, but the principles for that cable are basically the same as others. Uh, there are other cables that are compatible with this, like Canary has one that's basically identical in terms of its dimensions and, and uh, its ability to carry a signal reliably. Uh, but I'm gonna, the tools that I'm going to be using here are specifically designed for this cable. so. Uh, it's kind of important that you get the right tools because they're sized appropriately for the cable and connectors that you're going to be, be using. So, uh, as mentioned, I'm going to be using 1505A from Belden, and similar techniques work for other types of cables as well. All right, so on this side, we have the strippers, and on this side, we have the crimpers. So, basically what happens is we use the strippers to remove the, the outer layers of the cable. Uh, at, at the appropriate lengths, and then at that point we'll add the connector and then make it a permanent connection by using the crimpers. Uh, what I've got here, this is the TS100U from Canary, and it has different settings on it. Like right now I've got it set for Belden 1505A, which is the type of cable we're going to be using. There are settings for other types of cables on here as well. Basically you just turn the knob in order to adjust it for the different types of cable. And then I've got kind of a hardware store style solution for stripping, and then over here we've got I've got two different options for crimping. Uh, I do not have the official Canary crimper. Uh, it's very expensive and basically it's worse than this solution right here. So I'll get in and talk about that a little bit more as we get to that point. But I'm going to be demonstrating here what it actually takes. So I'm going to be taking this cable here and putting another end on it. So we'll go through all the steps. So what I, one tool I didn't have here to demonstrate is a coax cutter. So when you're cutting coax cable, it's, it's ideal to use a, a cutter that's actually made for it. The, they have curved blades on them, which helps, helps to reduce the amount of, of compression that is, is done on this center insulator. Um, I couldn't find mine, so for purposes of demonstration today, I had to use just a pair of diagonal cutters. But you can see by looking at it that that's been squashed. It's not super, super critical when you're terminating like this because that squash portion will actually be removed by the stripper. But uh, in an ideal world, you really should use a appropriately uh, appropriate tool for, for cutting your coax cable. Now, in order to strip this cable, I'm going to pull out my TS100U. And this is a little bit tricky to do, but you insert the cable in the side here, and you have to insert it all the way. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but the cable actually goes all the way to this side, out of this this this, this wall on this right side. And in, if you were in per, here in person, you'd be able to see the cable actually touching this window. And once you've got that pushed in all the way, at that point, you can close the stripper. And then on this side, you, you grab this firmly with your hand. And then I always, I have to, since I'm doing this upside down, I have to look to see which, okay, yeah, so from this way, I'm going to turn it like this. And the instructions say to turn it about seven or seven to ten times. I do it by feel. Uh, when I don't feel any additional resistance, there I go. That seems, seems like it's in pretty good shape. So at that point, you can open up the tool, a little button there, and then over, come over here, squeeze down on this lever, which will hold the stripped portions of the cable inside, and then pull the cable out and it left some of the outer jacket on but other than that it actually did do a really good job of, of stripping that so you can see the foil the braid are the appropriate length the center conductor is the appropriate length and the insulator there is the appropriate length for this type of connector all right the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to take put this, this outer ferrule on the cable you can you can do this before. It's actually a little easier to do it before you before you do the stripping. But you put that on there, and then we're going to take the center pin, put that on the center conductor there, 
And then we're going to take our crimper. And on this crimper, it's the center of these three. And then squeeze that into place. And that attaches that center pin permanently. And then we'll take the actual connector itself, the BNC connector itself. And we need to move the, this foil out of the way. I found the easiest way to do that is to actually stick the end on just part way and then just sort of twist it around like this. And that causes the foil, or the outer braid, sorry, to move out of the way. And then push until it clicks. And at that point, push the ferrule over the braid there. And then we can take our crimper and squeeze to fit. Now at that point, we have a connection that is very, very secure. It's very, very permanent. And it does an excellent job of allowing the signal to pass. Now, I know some people like to use cheaper connectors than, than maybe some of these. Uh, I've found that in the long run, it's generally not worth it. These really aren't that expensive. I, I get them for about $2 a piece. The cheap, ultra cheap ones, maybe, maybe you get them for between 50 cents and 75 cents a piece. However, long term, they'll fall off on you. They, they, don't, they don't transfer the signal as well. They allow, allow a lot of external interference. It's just not worth it in order to go with the inferior connectors. And so I always use these canary connectors on my cables, and I very high or highly recommend that other people do too. Now, um, this cable, with, all, with this cable made, I'm going to show you guys an alternative way to do this. Uh, I'm not I'm actually going to put an end on the cable, but I'll show you another way to, to do the stripping on this. So, I have this other solution here. This is what I actually used for a long time before I decided to finally invest in the appropriate stripper. But this is just kind of your hardware store style stripper. It has several different settings for different types of cables. So it has a, an RG58, an RG59, an RG6. The 1505A is a variant of RG59, and so we'll put it on the 59 setting there. It's in the middle. And at this point, we put the cable in the stripper, and then we'll turn it around several times until there's the resistance is mostly gone. And at that point, pull it out. In this case, it actually did a pretty good job, but probably about two-thirds of the time, I find that it doesn't remove the foil, and so you have to do that as a separate step. The other problem here is that the amount of the braid that's exposed is not correct. You actually, for those connectors to work, you actually need more of the braid exposed. And so that's where I have a second uh, stripper that comes into play. This is one I got from Radio Shack many, many years ago before they went out of business. Um, and then I'll just, I'll just do a second pass in order to make sure that the outer sheathing is cut to the appropriate length. So at that point, I'll just run there. And there's a little bit of guesswork there because, I mean, these aren't designed for the ty those type of connectors. So it may it may take an attempt or two in order to, to get a, a, to, the, to the right length there, but uh, it can be done. The other issue we have here is that the center pin... And the center conductor is actually a little bit too long, so I would need to come in here with a pair of diagonal cutters and trim that back just a tiny bit. So it does work in a pinch, but it's really not ideal. And I've really found that having the appropriate tool, the appropriate uh, stripper tool, really makes a huge, huge difference in the amount of time that it takes to terminate the cables as well as the quality of the connection as well. Like I, on these, it's very easy to strip back too much of that outer sheath, and when you do that, the the outer ferrule on the connector doesn't make great contact and it could allow that to come off or not uh, not basically keep the signal uh, contained within the cable appropriately. So you, get, you do get a far better connection using the appropriate tool. So I very, very highly recommend if you're going to be doing even more than a handful of connections that you invest in the appropriate uh, stripper tool for the type of cable and connector that you're using. So now when it comes to the crimpers, I actually recommend avoiding the official tool. So uh, I'll show you here on online. This is the price of the official crimp die from Canary. And, and then here is the official crimp frame. So the frame and the die are sold separately. And we come back over to my tool. 
And then if we come back to the crimper that I use, uh, I've got a Greenlee brand uh, crimp die in here. This is the model number 2649, and it's in just um, a generic cheap uh, crimp frame. I don't remember where I picked either one of these things up. I've had these for more than 15 years. Um, but this actually offers some advantages. In addition to having the the right sizes of of, of uh, holes in there, in order to make the appropriate connections, the, uh, a permanent connection with those cables, it also has sizes for both. So the official Canary die only has the the appropriate size for uh, RG59. It doesn't have one for RG6. And so this Green Lee one is actually advantageous because you get both. You're able to do both the RG59 style, like the 1505A, as well as the RG6, like the 1694, in one single tool instead of having to have multiple. And the other advantage is the price. So this this die can typically be had for about $35. And then these frames you can usually pick up for less than $15. i have got, I've got links to, to those uh, down in the description of the video down below. Now there's there is a cheaper solution here. This other uh, crimper. However, I don't actually recommend it. Uh, so this one does have the appropriate size, so it's 0 0.052 inches uh, for the center pin, and it has the appropriate size for uh, an RG59 cable, uh, the 0.255 inches. However, uh, it doesn't have the doesn't have the one the larger one for the RG6 size, and also this is lacking a center guide pin. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but uh, there is a little bar here that makes sure that these dies line up this direction, but it doesn't do a great job of making sure that the two halves of the die line up uh, in this direction, side to side. And so what happens is with this tool, as you're crimping, there is a possibility that one of those can be offset from the other, and then you don't get as good of a crimp on the connector. So this is a cheaper option, but it isn't necessarily a great option. So uh, you can you can pick this up for this, this die for less than twenty dollars, and then again just a generic frame. Uh, these these frames, crimp frames, and these dies are very very much interchangeable. So if you happen to like this this style that kind of comes off at an angle, you can you can use that with this die or vice versa. Uh, this has also has a, a more padded handle, so it's a little more comfortable to use. But it's it's really just up to you. Th these these dies can be interchanged either direction. But bottom line though is for doing these SDI cables, this Greenlee 2649 die is really my favorite. Uh, like I say I've been using it for more than 15 years, and it's never ever failed me. I've never had one of those connections uh, come loose or go bad on me in all of that time with hundreds and hundreds of cables that I've made. So, um, yeah, so I think this is a better option than the official Canary in terms of the crimp tools and in terms of the stripper. De definitely highly recommend getting the, getting the right stripper for the job. It does save a ton of time and it gives you a better connection. So, anyway, um, that's, uh, that's what I had for you today. If you guys have any questions about this, please leave those in the comments section down below. I'll try and answer as best I can. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Also, we, I do have a Patreon channel to help offset some of the costs of producing these videos. Each one of these videos takes me nearly a day to, to, to create between doing the research and shooting and editing and uploading and everything. So and any help that I can get to offset the, the, the amount of time that I spend on these, that's very much appreciated. Uh, the other thing that you guys can do to help is go sign up for my website. It's crewaxis.com, which is a site for basically planning everything ar around uh, of events in the video production world. So it handles the event scheduling, building your crew, uh, keeping in contact with your contacts, either, either clients, maintaining that relationship, keeping track of your equipment. So it does all of that stuff. So use the promo code down there in the description uh, as well. So anyway, thanks guys for watching and have a fantastic day.